Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Today, we're talking uranium with Jeff Klenda, who is the chair, CEO, and the face of the company at Your Energy. Your trades on the TMX and the New York Stock Exchange. Welcome, Jeff. Great. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me back. Uh, always love to talk shop. Let's talk uranium. Let's talk uranium. What part of the uranium industry are you in? Well, right now, we have been a producer for the last seven years, since 2013. We actually started the company back in 2004, so we're 17 years as of the end of this month that we uh, went into production initially in 2013, and we've been consistently producing since then. Right now, we're, we've been reduced. We're down at care, on care and maintenance since uh, spot price is still in the high 20s. Uh, not at a, at, a, at a level where anybody's going to be producing uh, prolifically, except the Kazakhs, um, and, and they do that to grab market share. But aside from that, um, we stand ready to ramp up production. We just need, uh, we need that contracting phase to begin once again. Right. So you're not, uh, you haven't shut down operations. You're just on limited operations. That's correct. We still have a, a full operational staff there. In fact, we have 10 guys at the plant, uh, all busy. We're cleaning operations. We're doing everything that needs to be done, prepping to ramp up, waiting for the green light. So uh, on January the 20th, a big day happened for you. And that was a new president took over with new uranium and supply chain policies. Uh, absolutely. Well, you know what? Uh, and, and I got to tell you, I was a bit worried about that because we've always looked at it as the Republicans were going to be friendlier to resource production of every kind. Now, one of the things we've been very pleasantly surprised at is the fact that the Biden administration, they've been saying all the right things. We are, and, and they've made it clear to the world that nuclear is a big part of their clean energy strategy and mandate. And they've got their green czar. I didn't make up the term. That's, that's John Kerry who has been a lifelong anti-nuke guy that's saying, hey, we got to have these guys. He, swim, he flipped over this week, right? He yeah. came out and said he was wrong 20 years ago. Let's go uranium. Yeah, I mean, so this is the kind of stuff that we're hearing, and this has resulted in a lot of uh, wind under our wings, you might say, in terms of the uh, the value of the equities. Now we're having a bit of a pullback today, but that's, uh, that's kind of been long overdue. But, uh, yeah, we, I mean... Right now, the members of the Biden administration are saying all the right things. Now, the only problem for us is, is that under the Trump administration, we knew all the guys at all the agencies, all the different various government positions. We had people in the White House, on the National Security Council. Now, unfortunately, we have to get to know the players all over again. And, and because the inauguration was just so recently on January 20th, many of those players are simply not in their chairs yet. So we wait for that to happen. When do you think that's going to happen? Is it a matter of days, weeks, or months? Well, right now we've got, we, had, we had something good happen this week. Um, we had uh, former Governor Granholm uh, was uh, seated as the uh, Secretary of Energy. So that's critical to us because we had um, an appropriation that came out of the last administration that was approved in December, and that was $75 million was appropriated for the um, structuring and, um, and standing up the uranium reserve here in the United States. And this is something that's much needed. We're virtually out of uranium. If if we were to see any type of a disruption in the flow of material that's coming into the United States from foreign sources, our U.S. utilities would be in crisis literally overnight because we don't have any backup plan. It's it, we, We're just in time deliveries, and that's what we're living off of right now. I was talking. I was talking to Mark Chalmers at Energy Fuels. He said that about five percent of the uranium consumed in the United States is produced domestically. And I'd say that the number is actually a little bit lower than that right now because we produce. Uh, I mean, we consume approximately fifty million pounds a year. With the and we have the largest fleet in the world, ninety-six reactors up and running right now. We consume about fifty million pounds a year, but we five uh, percent of that we're not producing. Uh, at that level, where, where in fact, uh, we are producing at such a low level as a country right now that the EIA division of the Department of Energy no longer produces an annual uranium report because there's not enough to report on. <laughs> right now, the bulk of it, we're 20% of our nuclear fuel comes from Russia. 
That's under the Russian suspension agreement, which was just extended and amended on October 5th of last year. And then we get another 25 to 30 percent from Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. And of course, nobody quite realizes that half of the producing facilities in Kazakhstan are actually owned by the Russians. So uh, when it comes to our nuclear fuel, it's not an exaggeration to say that we're about 50 percent dependent on Vladimir Putin and his Confederates on the other side of the world for our nuclear fuel. Uh, so I would suggest to anybody that that's uh, that's that's not good energy policy and it's downright dangerous national security policy. Well, adding to national security problems is the fact that there was a bombing in Syria last week and the Russians like the people that the Americans are bombing. How does this play out? You know, this is interesting, and it's I'm amazed that you know that, actually, because there's been something of a media blackout on this. I've been making an issue of this for the last three, four months. The simple fact of the matter is, is Biden, before the election, said, if elected, my first foreign policy initiative will be to go into Syria and take Syria back from Assad. Within 24 hours of the inauguration, we were moving troops and heavy armaments across the border from Iraq into Syria. And we just had the first mil uh, airstrikes take place on Thursday of last week. So here's the problem. The Russians are dug in like ticks there. They have, um, they have a defense agreement with Assad and the Syrians, as do the Chinese. We're going in there now, we're bombing, we're strategically bombing targets, but we've got boots on the ground, we've got heavy armaments on the ground. What happens now if this thing escalates and we actually get into a hot shooting war with the Russians? We just signed the Russian suspension agreement on October 20th. I guess my question would be to Mr. Biden would be, you know, sir, we just signed this Russian suspension agreement that is supposed to provide us with 20 percent of our nuclear fuel for the next 20 years. And we are 20 percent of the electricity baseload in the United States. How long do you think Vladimir Putin continues to supply that enriched material that our utilities have become so desperately dependent upon in the once we escalate this into a shooting war with the Russians with, and with the boots on the ground and the armaments in country? It's only a matter of time. So you're right. How, this is a big issue that nobody is paying attention to because there's been a media blackout on it. You're not hearing about it anywhere. So this is wildly supportive of the North American uranium industry. You would think so. And I think that uh, what would happen here is that if there were ever a disruption in the flow of this material coming in from Russia, Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan, our domestic utilities would be in crisis literally overnight. And uh, hey, and by the way, that was not a failure of nuclear down there. That was a failure of alternative energy. Nuclear actually bailed them out. The problem in Texas was is they didn't have enough nuclear. Uh, you know, they made the decision and, you know, ERCOT made the decision. They're now reevaluating that. And I don't think they're going to let that happen. I think that what you're going to see is them ramp up their nuclear power presence in, in, uh, in Texas. And I think they need to. Okay. Let's talk specifically about your property, your company. Now we'll go from yeah. the macro to the micro. Sure. Um, our friends over at, uh, energy fuels have been pulling vanadium out of their, uh, tailings. I believe, does your project have anything other than uranium in it? No, we're, we're, we're a pure uranium play on both fronts, on both Lost Creek and on Shirley Basin. So, uh, no, we don't have vanadium. And, and right now, vanadium, of course, has uh, had its own pricing issues. But, uh, no, we're, uh, we're just a one-trick one pony, but we are a pure uranium play. But, the, you know, having said that, we are the lowest cost producer of uranium outside of Kazakhstan. So uh, we're not only in the lowest, lowest quartile of cost producers in the world, we may be in the lowest 10%. So everybody in the United States can produce at a lower cost than we can. It appears that Cantor has some faith in you because they recently did a large, let a large financing for you for $15 million. That we did. We did a raise about a month ago and uh, we did it at a good price. And uh, so we're, we're cashed up. We've got about 18 and a half million in cash, but um, we also have inventory that's valued at about another 9 million. Uh, so what you find is that you know, you've know you got this uranium reserve, right? And everybody's vying for any contract that might come out of the uranium reserve. So we're hoping to be part of that as well. But in the first year, when there needs to be delivery into those contracts, 
nobody's going to be ramped up in, and ready to produce immediately. We can ramp up faster than anyone else, and even we need six months to nine months. Energy Fuels is right there with us, maybe a bit behind us, but we're the two that will ramp up the quickest. And uh, so it puts us in... Sorry to interrupt. Who will be third? Uh, third would likely be Peninsula because they've got, uh, they're have got they doing the, uh, the low pH um, uh, acid leach, and uh, they were producing uh, right up until about two years ago, and uh, they're they're ready to go now. They've got and they've got a good they've got a strong technical team over there. And behind them would be likely UEC. Um, they haven't produced in about seven eight years now, but they would probably be fourth in line in terms of those able to ramp production the the quickest in in the event that we get new contracts and we get the green light to ramp production. On Twitter, that bastion of good news, I'm seeing a lot of chatter from Australian uh, uranium investors and Australian uranium companies saying now's the time. But the uranium price for a long time has felt like we're waiting for a good deal. When does it come in? Well, I think that uh, the first thing that we have to look at is the supply-demand fundamentals. And this is something that's been absent for a long time. I mean, the fundamentals have been just bad. We have had this We've been, we've had the, we've, our industry has been characterized by extreme oversupply and a lack of demand with the Japanese Fukushima event and 54 reactors being closed down, which would equated to about 13% of global demand. So this is something we've been working off for the last eight, nine years. Well, the 10 year anniversary of Fukushima is actually one week from today. It's amazing how quick a, a decade goes by. But you know, now we find ourselves in a completely different position. This will be the third year where we have actually a structural deficit in uranium uh, of more than 50 million pounds. Last year, consumption globally was about 180 million pounds, and, and production, primary production, was approximately 120 million pounds. So we had roughly a 60 million pound structural deficit that has to be made up by secondary supply. And now secondary supply can be above ground inventories, it can be underfeeding, it can be enrichment of tails, it can be, uh, you know, it, it, it can be recycling. So it, there's a lot of forms of it, but this will be the third year in a row now, 2021, where we have had more than a 50 million pound structural deficit. Look at it this way. You've got an industry that is consuming approximately 180 million pounds a year. That's going to be a much higher this year because we've got 12 to 15 new reactors coming online this year. We're only one reactor came, 12 to 15 new reactors coming online this year. Only one new one came online last year because of COVID. So we've got 12 to 15 new reactors. So we could have demand upward of upwards of 190 million pounds. But how many other commodities do you know where you've got essentially a structural deficit that equates to one third of global consumption? That can't go on for very long. And yet that's where we find ourselves in the third year of that right now. Well, let's close it off there then. Yeah. I'll check yeah. in with you in a couple of months. We'll see what's happening. Spot will be at 35 by then. You bet. And let's, let's hope that uh, you know one of my big uh, goals for the year is to make it on the Russell this year. Been on three times. I've been off three times. Always a lot of fun when you go on. Not so much fun when you come off. But uh, I think that we're well positioned. If the re-ranked day were today, I'd be getting on the Russell. And that always means a big push in the stock. So I think that anybody that's uh, that's on our stock is going to be in for a very good year. And we fully expect to make it on the Russell this year. So I think that will contribute to our performance. So looking Excellent. forward to it. And, hey, thanks for having me again. Your here. Energy, Jeff Klenda, founder, CEO, chief cook and bottle washer, a man who knows his uranium, trades on the TMX, and the New York Stock Exchange. Jeff, pleasure to see you again. Great, Peter. Thanks so much. I'm Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel. Be safe.